I really think it's time to hit the reset button on decluttering. Hi everyone, I'm Jenna. And on this channel, I share my home, my gardens, and my opinions with you as we discuss mindful living, healthy productivity, and freeing ourselves from perfectionism. All right, everybody, let's talk about decluttering. I've never been someone who has fully drank the decluttering Kool-Aid. And I wanna talk about why because I think a lot of you are gonna identify with some of my feelings about this. I just have a hunch. I do wanna to touch on what I mean by decluttering versus what I feel that many of the influencers or loud voices who are producing this content seem to mean. Now remember, this is just my opinion. I'm not intending to come down on any of these people. In fact, I'm not even gonna mention channel names or any of that because I don't think that that's particularly helpful. In fact, the videos featured on the thumbnail for this video, they were just a screen grab from putting decluttering into my search bar and a staggering number of videos came up. And I wanna talk about this particular issue right now at the start of the year because it just seems to be the time that this topic starts to surge, like I mentioned in the beginning. So what I personally consider to be clutter aligns pretty closely with the actual dictionary definition of the word. To crowd together in disorder to fill or cover with things in disorder or scattered at random or with things that impede movement or action or reduce effectiveness. So basically, in my opinion, clutter is stuff that is out of place and needs to be put away, organized, or curated. That's it. One of those three things. I really think it's time to hit the reset button on decluttering. What it means when we say declutter and what the expectations are or have become around that word. In my mind, the modern or colloquial use of the word decluttering seems to have become a sort of blanket excuse to just throw things out, throw things out and start new, buy new. And there are just so many problems with that. Of course, we can't cover everything in this video, but I want to get the conversation going and I really want to hear your opinion on this. I'd also love to know from those of you who are on other platforms like TikTok and Instagram, are you seeing this over there as well? Or is this primarily a YouTube phenomenon? I'm just curious. So let me know if you see it in other places too. I find myself wondering if this is a bit of a symptom of the season. Perhaps in part a post-holiday reflex, like a reactionary sort of vibe to having a lot of stimulation and a lot of things around you in terms of decor, gifts, overindulgence with purchases. I don't know, maybe that's part of the puzzle. Perhaps there is an element of like cabin fever here where people are in their homes so much more this time of year and they're really looking at their environment. Maybe they're feeling claustrophobic because they're inside so much and they're finding themselves looking at the things they own. You know, maybe their decisions or their lack of decisions are catching up with them and that's very uncomfortable. And I think when faced with that kind of stress, it can be really easy to react in sort of a dramatic fashion. Where I take issue with this, though, is that if someone declares that they're decluttering 2,000 items, the implication is not that they sorted and curated and organized 2,000 items. The implication is that they got rid of 2,000 items. Now, just to be clear, I have seen some videos over the course of time, of course, of these people doing these decluttering videos, but I didn't watch all the ones that are on that thumbnail of my video. First of all, I don't have time. But second of all, I don't really feel that I need to because they're sort of declaring their intent with their titles and their thumbnails. And I get the message. The message is get rid of stuff and do it quickly. There's a lack of engaging in self-reflection about what's actually causing the messiness and the disorganization and ultimately the overwhelm. And I just feel that that gets people on this carousel of Get rid of everything, buy more. It's like a consumerism wheel. And I'm talking about like everyday life here. I'm not talking about truly extreme situations where say you've inherited an estate full of other people's items. 
which I have done and I have experience with, and I can talk about that more if you're interested. I'm not talking about suddenly finding out that you have to downsize five years earlier than you expected and now you have a lot of decisions to make. That's not what I'm really talking about here. What I am talking about when I think about decluttering or clutter management, to me it's much more of a system of decision making and intentional and conscientious curation of things. I like things. I like stuff, you know, and this is not a, a, a video about minimalism, but boy, do I have a lot of thoughts about that too. I'm so tired of people being convinced that they need to just get rid of things because it doesn't fit someone else's paradigm for what counts as useful or in vogue or on trend or whatever words you want to use, but there seems to be this outsourcing of decision making and boy, I could really go down a rabbit hole about this if I'm not careful. So I'm trying to stay on topic. But for example, if you've been here, you know that I have a lot of things in my home that I've actually inherited from generations of people being very careful to pass these things down. I feel privileged and grateful to have these things. Now, if they were really truly a burden to me, I'd have to figure out what to do about that. But if I listen to everyone else out there who is clamoring about people having too much stuff, and I got rid of some of these things, I would definitely regret it. And I know because there have been times in my life where I have gotten rid of things and I have wished I had not done that. To hear these people talk, you would think there's no such thing as decluttering regret. Of course there is. I love art, I love books, I love antiques, I love new things, I love old things, but I also have really conscientiously developed a way to keep a handle on the things that I have, to only have things in my life and in my home that I really love and want around me. What I'm trying to say is that I feel a lot of times most people, the average person, doesn't really have a clutter problem. Usually they have some combination of an organization problem and a curation problem and a decision-making problem and a systems problem, kind of some combination of those things. And one small sliver of that is what these people are really calling clutter. So putting all of that in one giant bucket and calling it clutter just does not seem useful to me and it actually feels quite disingenuous. So I get kind of fired up when I see all these videos, you know, with these titles because I know there are people who are probably going to be in a vulnerable state that watch these videos and think, okay, this will solve my problems. I'll just get rid of 80% of what I own or I'll just take my closet down to five items or I'll just you know, get rid of all but two plates and two forks and two knives and that'll solve my problems. Usually it won't. I mean, I'm not surveying these people directly, but my assumption is that it probably doesn't actually help that many people to behave in this dramatic and extreme of a manner. So anyway, I just want to raise the notion and the idea that there are better ways to manage your things. There are much better ways to go about curating your home and um, if you want me to talk about that more in the future, please let me know. I'd be happy to do that. I'll wrap this up by saying, if no one has said this to you, I want to be the person that gives you permission to love art and books and physical media and things you've inherited from your grandparents and old plates you found at the thrift store that just make you happy even though you already have another set of dishes. And it's okay to have collections. It's okay to have more than one of something if it makes you happy. I love all kinds of cool thrifted items and I'm not gonna get rid of them just because extreme decluttering and minimalism is trendy. Maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. Let's talk about it down in the comment section. And I wanna thank you for watching today. I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.